Okay, for this video, we are going to create an imperial drawing template. And once these are set up, typically you can use this as your start point for any imperial drawing going forward. Um, everything you set up inside it with notes, dimensions, all that stuff that's tedious to start up and do again and again, you can save it to your drawing template and it's always there ready to go for a new project. So I'm just going to start by clicking on new to start a new drawing. The first thing I'm going to want to do is type in units and hit enter. And because this is again an imperial drawing, we want to set it to architectural. And precision, we can leave it at 1 16th. You just want it to be probably a little bit. Over. What this does basically is while you're drawing, it's going to round off to these increments. So if you just put it to 0, 0, it'll round off to the nearest inch. We want it to be a little bit more precise. You can always change your dimensions later to only display feet and inches um, and no fractional inches. So we'll just pick um, 1 32nd of an inch. And again, make sure that this is on the base unit for Imperial at inches. Um, angle, you don't have to do anything about that. You want decimal degrees and precision at zero. That's your, your angles for all of your radiuses or your polar tracking. So we'll hit OK. And then now moving on, we want to set up the annotative settings. So one thing to mention before we move on, um, before AutoCAD incorporated these annotative text dimensions and leaders, uh, you would have to set up a scale for each set of text dimensions and leaders, um, which could be pretty tedious because you would have all your drawing in here, floor plans, details, everything at different scales, and each one um, you would have to set up at a specific scale. With annotative, um, the idea is scaling. Um, you can just basically select it for the drawing and all of the annotative text, dimensions, blocks, hatches will change automatically to reflect the scale you set, which is down here in the bottom right. So this is your annotative scale setting uh, because we've set it up as Imperial. It gives us standard Imperial presets. Um, and again, we can customize and change these all we want. You can see down at the bottom, there's custom setting right here. So we'll get to that eventually, but basically this saves a lot of time. You can set up again, one set of annotative text, one set of annotative dimensions, one set of annotative leader lines, and it will automatically adjust every time you need it to when you change that scale factor, instead of again, having a set for each scale as you set it, which could be very tedious. So this is a handy um, innovation that AutoCAD made, you know, over a dozen years ago, but anyways, it's good. So I'm going to go along the ribbon menu and find annotate. So I'm going to start with the text. So I want to set up an annotative text. You can see there's one already there, which we could work with. We're going to click on this little arrow here to pop up the textiles menu. So we'll click new and we'll call this Imperial Annotative Standard. So that is our text setting. So first thing we'll do is we'll change the text. I typically go with Arial. It's a nice basic font, regular. We want to make sure annotative is clicked off. It should be. Paper text height. We're going to set this to an eighth of an inch. Now just to briefly talk about text um, settings for a drawing. There are standards uh, typical for notes, dimensions, and spacing between the lines is actually typically 1 16th, but this can be quite small on a drawing. Um, so we're gonna bump that up a little bit to an eighth of an inch, which is basically two and a half millimeters instead of two millimeters if we were to convert to metric. Um, as well, while we're looking at this, there's also uh, drawing titles typically at 3 seconds of an inch or project names nice and big at 3 16ths of an inch. So these are architectural standards but by no means do you have to absolutely adhere to those sizes, but you wanna be generally, if not that size, only a little bit more for those different um, types of lettering or dimensions. Okay, so this is basically all we needed to do for the setting. So we're gonna hit apply. We're gonna click set current. 
and close. Okay, so moving on, now that we've set the text, we want to go over to dimensions now. So by default, there's already an annotative here and standard. Um, so we're going to again click this little arrow in the bottom right of that portion of the ribbon menu to pull up the dimension style box. And you can see we've got those two styles already set up. So we're basically just going to take this one and let's go to new and we'll call it Imperial Annotative Standard. Start with the annotative style, that's the one we want, um, and obviously annotative. So let's hit continue. So this will pop up the customization. So we'll start at lines. So for lines, we don't want these to be by block, we want them to be by layer. Um, so what that does is it just makes the base properties for color, line type, line weight to come from your layer. So if we've set up a layer for dimensions, it will pull those properties from your layer and apply it to your dimensions. So this is the best way to do it. Um, again, you'll have a layer for dimensions, uh, so you want to make sure that that is checked off. Okay. So make sure these are also by layer, by layer, by layer for the extension lines as well. For these, we are going to set them to 1 8th. Again, because that's kind of our standard we've set for text, you keep it relatively consistent. Okay, so symbols and arrows now. Now you could leave this at arrows. Um, that's a pretty standard um, mark, but another kind of, you know, tried, tested, and true is the architectural tick. So we can switch to architectural tick, architectural tick, and leader we'll leave as closed filled. Uh, the arrowhead size, um, generally, again, you want this to be around a sixteenth of an inch to an eighth of an inch. So we're going to set it to an eighth of an inch. So center marks, we want mark, and we're going to set this to an eighth of an inch. That's just this little symbol here for um, center of your radius dimension. It just gives a little marker of where it's taking that reading from the center of the object it's taking that from. <clears throat> okay, so you have a couple options here for the arc symbol. So we're going to switch this to preceding dimension text. Radius job, we'll leave that at 45. And linear jog, jog factor, we're going to set to 1 eighth, one eighth of an inch for the text height. And now moving on to text. So we set up that annotative style, so we're going to make sure that we're using that and switch this to by layer, fill color, none. Okay, so this is already taken care of for us because we've set up this text style and it's also annotative. Uh, text placement, you can leave it centered in the line or you can put it above, um, again, centered above, and then you could switch the offset to whatever you want just for consistency and memory. We're gonna set this to an eighth of an inch. So you can see how now our line is above and again we're going to set the same thing text alignment for when it's on an angle there you can see it went from horizontal to aligned so we're going to set it to aligned and now move on to fit so we're going to leave the first one as best fit and then when it can't place the text or the dimension in between the lines we can tell it where to put it so in this case we'll say over the line with a leader and then now we're going to go to primary units. So decimal. Decimal is a good setting if you're doing small scale engineering drawings. Um, everything's in inches or, um, you know, inches and a decimal place. But typically you want to set it to architectural for doing homes and larger designs. This is obviously the standard. 
So, and you can set again this precision to whatever you want. If you just want it to pop up as feet and inches, say you're doing a floor plan, um, you'll likely want to set the precision to 0.0, .0 or sorry, 0 feet, 0 inches as the precision. If you're doing detailing, um, where you have to call out, you know, a fraction of an inch, things have to be much more specific. Um, you can set the precision to fractional inches, but for the purposes of this, we're going to set it to 0, -0 just to keep things at feet and inches. Again, um, we'll also be setting up a template in another video for metric. Um, but for architecture, we're going to set this for our imperial drawings to be based. You can always change this later or make a copy of it and create another one where the precision is different or the unit format is different. But once it's all set up, it's very easy to do that. Okay, and our angular dimensions are where we want them. We don't have to change anything there. So we're going to hit OK and close. We can also see our preview here um, generally looks OK. So let's hit OK. And we can set current. And also, like I was mentioning, if you hit modify or, or sorry, if you hit new, then you can take a copy of this and make those changes we were talking about to the kind of fit and units to be displayed. There's also um, the ability to show alternate units. So you could even show um, metric on the same string line in brackets. So um, again, you can show imperial and metric using this alternate units. Figure it's worth mentioning that. Um, very handy. Okay, so we're going to hit close on that. And then now we are going to move on to over here. The multi leaders. So these are for callouts, callouts for notes, materials. Um, it's just basically an arrow with a a line and, and some text to identify something on your drawing. But we're going to click again on that little arrow in the bottom right, and that's going to pull up the multi leader style manager. So let's click new. So we can go copy standard again, imperial annotated. Standard. Start with standard. Again, now you have to click off the annotative because there's not an already annotated one to copy. And then we'll hit continue. Okay, so that pulls up the <clears throat> style menu for our new multi leader. So let's go back to leader format. We want it to be straight. You can also make it spline. Spline is just a curvy line, um, but generally you're going to want straight. And again, by layer, by layer, by layer. Generally, you want all your objects to be by layer because that's how you want to manage color, line weight, printability. You always want it to be by layer. Okay, so for symbol, we'll stick with closed filled. Arrow size, we will go with 1 8th to maintain consistency. Uh, break size, we'll leave it at 1 8th of an inch as well. So leader structure, we're going to want to make this free. Make sure annotatives clicked off and then to content. So content, we want it to be M text. We want to change the text to our Imperial annotative standard we set up. And by layer, text heights already set. And then we want horizontal attachment. We want middle of text. middle of text again, and instead of 330 seconds, we want an eighth of an inch. And click OK. Set current and close. So now you can see across the top, we have our Imperial Annotative Standard for text, Imperial Annotative Standard for our dimensions, Imperial Annotative Standard for leaders. So you can see we can set the base dimension here, so let's foot equals a foot. So we'll start some text. And again, typically in caps lock, all capitals, and we'll do a quick dimension line. So you can see everything's looking pretty good. So now, if we change this scale, Instead of having to redo three different 
styles all over again for say a quarter of an inch equals a foot we can just click our scale here to a quarter of an inch equals a foot um, and then now new text so you can see automatically it made that adjustment for us okay so delete that but now you want to go control shift s or click on the icon badge and go to save as and make sure we're saving as a drawing template again we can rename this name it imperial template dot dwt so your typical drawing is obviously dot dwg you want to save your template as dot dwt and it's best to show it in your to store it save it where the rest of your drawing cad templates are um, if you're working on a personal computer obviously this changes if you're working on one of the school computers because you don't typically have access to the root file system for the application so in this case if you're working on a school computer then you'll want to save your imperial dwt drawing to your h drive um, or you can take it from your h drive and then upload it to your google drives wherever but typically uh, with autocad you want the file on the computer that you're physically working on um, you don't typically use this program saving things to the cloud uh, there's lots of uploading and downloading to take things from machine to machine um, but yeah, your H drive is basically your, your school drive. Any computer you log into will have access to your H drive. However, only the computers in the classroom have installations licensed with AutoCAD. Um, so we're just going to click save now, make sure you save it to the location and make sure it's the AutoCAD drawing template.